nation, I must lift my voice. He is the one God, Jehovah Almighty. I'll sing His praises, I'll ever rejoice. Whenever I think of His mercy extended from heaven to this earth below, I am amazed He was willing to save me and pay every debt that I owe. given to me so i'll worship his majesty sing to his glory i'll praise him for eternity i will sing praise to the king of all glory to the lord of creation i must lift my voice he is the one god jehovah almighty i'll sing his praises i'll ever rejoice sometimes i feel i'm unworthy to praise him in my eyes i am so small but if i decided to wait to feel worthy i might never praise him at all let everything that hath breath praise the lord for salvation his matchless grace so i'll worship his majesty sing to his glory i'll praise him for all of my days i will sing praise to the king of all glory to the lord of creation i must lift my voice he is the one god jehovah almighty I'll sing His praises, I'll ever rejoice. I will sing praise to the King of all glory, to the Lord of creation. I must lift my voice. He is the one God, Jehovah Almighty. I'll sing His praises, I'll ever rejoice. I'll sing His praises, I'll ever rejoice. his praises will ever rejoice what a wonderful thing what a wonderful day well we this week we've been having a great time we've been we've been talking about how to have a spiritual church our six marks of a spiritual church and certainly i want our church to be spiritual i really do and, and i know that means i have to work at it all the time in my life and i know that the same is true of god's people in general all of you that are watching today. Maybe you're not a member at, at uh, North Harrison Baptist Church, but wherever your church is, and wherever you serve, and wherever you worship the Lord, I, I know you wanna be a blessing, you wanna be a help. And so that's what we're working at today. Because when we talk about six marks of a spiritual church, we're not talking about six marks of a spiritual building. No, we're not talking about a meeting place, we're talking about people. And it's you and it's me that will determine how spiritual our church is. And uh, that's so very important. These six marks, here's what we've talked about so far. We've talked about uh, the first mark of a spiritual church is prayer. We ought to be a praying people. And then the second thing we talked about was fellowship, how important it is to fellowship. By the way, every time I come to that one, it reminds me, that's our memory verse for the week. It has to do with fellowship, with God's people loving one another. In John chapter 13, verse 35, by this shall all men know that ye are my disciples if ye have love one for another. John 13, 35. Get that memory verse down and uh, get it in your life day after day, week after week. Let the Lord do some wonderful things for you there. So that so we've talked about Bible study we, and, and we've talked about the fellowship. We've talked about prayer. And uh, we've talked about today, uh, we're going to be talking, and well, we talked about giving. I don't want to leave that one out. We talked about giving. And today we're going to be talking about praise, and that's number five. And then I'm also going to tell you what number six is, and we'll end with that. 
Number five is praise. And back in again in Acts chapter two, and that's where we've spent much of our time this week, as and verse number 46 and 47, the Bible says, and they continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking bread from house to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. And verse 47, first word, praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily, such as should be saved. So not only did 3,000 get saved on the day of Pentecost, talked about that yesterday a little bit, but now they're seeing people saved on a daily basis. So they were having a minimum of seven a week saved. And one of the things I asked God to help me do when I became a pastor was to have an average of seven saved a week. So at least an average of one a day. And uh, it wasn't necessarily every day, maybe on Saturday when it was our soul winning time, we might have four or five saved and maybe through the week, the other one or two. But my goal was to have seven saved every week. Then I got a little bit bolder and I said, Lord, I wanna see seven baptized every day. And you know, in a short period of time, within the first couple of years of pastoring in my first pastorate, uh, we begin we begin to see the numbers grow and we begin to see more people saved and more people involved in soul winning. And we were seeing uh, an average of over 400 every year baptized. They got not only got saved, they got baptized, 400. So that was more than one a day. And boy, that just thrilled me. That was, that was just for my own personal gratification. It had nothing to do with, uh, with trying to be, beat somebody else or have more than somebody else. It, it had to do with reaching people for Christ, trying to be like a New Testament church, wanting to do the work that God's called us to do. So we think about this thing of praise. We need to offer God praise and uh, how important it is that we praise him in our daily lives. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter uh, number 13 and verses 15 and 16, it says, by him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise. You know, sometimes, uh, sometimes praise just flows out very easy. All of a sudden you get unbelievably good news. You, you go in, the boss calls you in and he wants to see you and you go in there and you're kind of nervous. What's gonna happen? Am I being laid off? Am I losing my job? Am I gonna be reprimanded? Uh, or does he want something else? And all of a sudden the boss says, uh, would you be open to a promotion to another situation and your salary will increase by 25% this year? And uh, wow, you go out of there, man, you're excited. You can't wait to get to a phone, call your husband or wife or, or to tell your friends. And uh, you don't wanna tell too many people right there where you work because you don't want them being jealous or whatever. But you can't, the people that you love, you can't wait to tell them. And you're praising, you're, you're just full of praise and, and you're praising the Lord for what God's done in your life and how he's helped you. And so this matter of praise, having that praise in your life. And uh, sometimes praise has to be a sacrifice. Sometimes things don't go the way you want them to. You know what you say then? You say, praise the Lord anyhow. Praise the Lord anyhow. I'm gonna keep on praising the Lord. And I tell you, it'll be a blessing in your life as you learn to give God praise and glory and trust him every day for every event on a good day, on a bad day, on the up days, on the down days, on the well days, on the sick days, whatever the day that God is in control and you, you're trusting him and you know that the, you don't know, maybe you can't figure it out immediately why something is happening, but you just watch and wait and keep praising the Lord. And after a while, you'll look back and say, you know what? I think I know why that happened now. And I praise God for it. So why don't you go ahead and praise him for it, even in the beginning. Say, Lord, I, I would never have asked for this. I don't know why it came my way, but I'm gonna praise God anyhow. Praise the Lord anyway. Just go ahead and get that attitude and that spirit. We try to, to we, we try to flatter people by praising them. Why not praise the one who's worthy of our praise? Why not give praise and glory and honor to God? And do it unashamedly, do it openly. Just learn to say, well, praise the Lord. That is wonderful. And instead of signing things, listen, there's one little thing I, I just detest. And I don't I make somebody mad. That's okay. Everybody's going to, you, you go on Facebook and they got OMG, 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 everywhere you look, OMG. You know what they're saying? 
excuse me for even saying it, they're saying, oh my God. They're taking the name of God in vain. They're just, they're just throwing it out there. Why don't they just instead say PTL, praise the Lord, and give God glory and honor and praise for what he's doing. And we need to learn to honor God, not to discredit him and, uh, and, and call on him in ways that are ungodly, but in ways that would bring honor and praise and glory to his name. I wanna challenge you to do that. So we need to be praising him. And again, we try to flatter others. We need to be flattering God. Over in 1 Kings chapter one, I thought this was an interesting verse. In, in 1 Kings chapter one, verse number 40, the Bible says, all the people came up to him after uh, came, came up after him, and the people piped with pipes and rejoiced with great joy, so that the earth rent with the sound of them. That's when Solomon was anointed king of Israel. The people were rejoicing. They didn't they didn't look at him and say, "Well, yeah, I know he's a big guy, and I know he's David's son, but I don't know that he's the best qualified. I don't know if I like him that well." No, they just said, "Hey, if that's God's will, we're going to praise God for it. We're going to back him. We're going to support him. We're going to do our best to to be a blessing to the kingdom." And you know what? Under his kingdom, it reached the greatest heights of its history. And, and uh, he obviously being the wisest man on earth and uh, then had the greatest wealth on earth and used that wealth to bring honor and glory and praise to God. And you, so you see where I'm going with this thing and, and what we need to do is we need to, we need to get that praise in our lives and honor him. And by the way, praise convicts people of sin and brings the fear of God. Well, the, they, they hear you talking about God. You're, you're sitting in a restaurant and you, you're bowing your head and you're praying. You're not making a big issue of it. You're not going to stand up on a chair and say, okay, every head bowed, every eye closed. We're going to pray and ask God to bless this meal. These people don't even know who you, they don't know you from Adam's house cat. They, they think you're some kind of nut. And uh, well, you probably are, but you're screwed onto the right bolt. And that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He's our savior and our wonderful savior. But, but it wouldn't hurt if they overheard you at the couple of tables around as, as you're having a conversation to all of a sudden say, well, isn't that amazing? Praise the Lord. And you know what that does? For some people, all of a sudden, they might sort of wonder what's going on. They'll be watching you. From that point forward, they'll be, they'll be looking at you out of the corner of their eye, wondering what you're gonna say next or do next or uh, that kind of thing. And it's just that praising the Lord, it gets the attention, puts a little bit of fear in some people's hearts, but it also causes them to think. It causes them to put their thinking caps on and, and, uh, and wonder what it is that this guy is praising the Lord about, wonder what good things happened in his life. And it's part of your testimony of being someone that's a God-fearing Christian that gives God the honor and the glory and the praise that only he deserves. So praise him. I challenge you to do it. Let's all do it. Now, this is Friday. I want to remind you, Sunday morning, we're going to be having church at North Harrison Baptist Church. We're going to be having an open church, and uh, everyone is welcome. And uh, if you'll come there at the 11 o'clock hour, Sunday school will be online at 9 a.m., and uh, then Sunday evening and Wednesday night are still online, but our Sunday morning service will be open. So call your friends. As a matter of fact, hit that share button and go ahead and let them know what's going on. And uh, we would love to see you there. And of course, all of the North Harrison folks, we dearly want you to come. And so please share this with your friends as well and uh, let God use you and uh, why don't you, maybe you could put it, you know, usually if you, if you share something that says you want to make a comment about it, you could just put up there. Okay, here, here's a good comment you could put. How about this? Let's just praise the Lord. Hey, I told you I was going to give you six things. The sixth one's one I talk about all the time, almost every point. I can't help it. It's soul winning. It's just that simple. Number six ought to be a soul winning church. That was the last point. So I wanted to get them all in this week. God bless you. Thanks for watching and listen as we go off the air with some beautiful music. I've been there in the lowest of times 
I've had questions in my mind, I've been scared, but I know that I have a Savior who knows right where I am and hears my prayer. In the midst of all the problems and burdens of this life, I will call upon the one who can get me through the night. Lord, hold my hand in the middle of my storm. When I'm sinking down, Lord, help me to stand. When the waves are crashing round, Keep my eyes on you, cause Lord, you're the only one who can help me get through the middle of my storm. I don't know how the story will end. I didn't see this in the plans you had for me, but I know that I can trust in the one who's working all things for my good. Though I may not know the answers till I reach the other side, I will keep my eyes on Jesus till my faith become sight. Lord, hold my hand in the middle of my storm. When I'm sinking down, Lord, help me to stand. When the waves are crashing round, may I keep my eyes on you. Cause Lord, you're the only one who can help me get the middle of my storm. Lord, you're greater than my problems, greater than my fears. You are greater than my weakness, greater than my tears. You never let me down, and you are here. Lord, hold my hand in the middle of my storm. When I'm sinking down, Lord, help me to stand. Help me stand. When the waves are crashing round, may I keep my eyes on you. Because, Lord, you're the only one who can help me get through. You are the only one who can help me get through. The middle of my storm. The middle of my